Yes. And given that, as we've touched upon, we, there was the assumption that, that um, progress was going to be a, to an increasingly secularized society. We're starting to see the limitations of that, uh, the revival of uh, faith-based ideas in extremists and sometimes again the, the negative aspects of faith at the forefront prejudicial uh, confrontational r uh, self-righteous as opposed to righteous ideas and i uh, wonder that it, in this now we live don't we in a sort of a globalized space this um romantic if i may say idea of having a a, a bounded community uh, a parish identity it seems like because i agree with you that like with that thing you said that mind booba thing that relationships over time community connection I, in a sense i feel like i've been in my own life trying to create those kind of or participate rather in those kind of communities again through sort of 12 step groups or even something as uh, parochial as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu provides a kind of structure, hierarchy, respect, humility, like the sort of community values. I feel like all of the ideas we are discussing live in opposition, not to alternative spiritual ideologies, but to materialist and rationalist ideologies. That's where the true opposition comes from, from uh, materialism, consumerism, corporatism, and, and the other forces and ideas that undergird globalization as we currently understand it. So for there to be a kind of uh, renewed sense of community where people bond together on long spiritual lines as opposed to under Eco, eco, uh, uh, rather than economic relationships, it feels like there's going to need to be a kind of confederacy that necessarily can't be denominational because otherwise we're going to be, how do you achieve yeah. alliance with yeah. Muslims, atheists? Yeah, when you've got such a dominant narrative. When we've been, and I, the thing is, I don't know anyone set out to do it, but somehow we've been sold this pack of lies about what a good life is. And... What is that pack of lies, just to clarify? Cause I'm, yeah, yeah. What is it like success so, and money and yeah. some sex and a nice car? Yeah, I think so. So one of the most helpful books I ever read, actually, was by a famous atheist called Alan Botton, and he wrote a book called Status Anxiety. Mm. And he really puts his finger on this issue that one of the defining features of life is this, like, jostle. Uh, the sort of sideways look and the sideways look of uh, where's everyone else where am I where's everyone else where am I am I ahead am I behind like am I hotter am I less hot am I fatter am I thinner am I clever am I not have I got a better job title and all these things and I don't think anyone actually intellectually assents to that I don't think anyone goes oh yeah the most important people in the world are the rich hot ones <laughs> they are the people we want to spend all our time looking at and trying to be like that's what i want my life to be i'm going to live my life like that i don't i don't think anyone consciously does that but unconsciously because of the way the storytelling of our culture works that's what happens and so we get this system in the same way i think that the patriarchy is shit for men as well as women we get a system of status anxiety that is terrible for the winners and the losers. So those at the bottom who feel like, you know, they, they they don't have dignity because they're not economically productive or they're not physically attractive or they're not seen as a winner, suffer. And they suffer a deep crisis of identity and meaning. And we know that it correlates terribly with mental health and well-being. If, you're, if, you, if you define yourself as a loser in the system, you suffer. But those who have won... And maybe you experienced this and I read your addiction book and talk about this beautifully. Like those who those who pursue those goals and win, who get the things the world tells us will satisfy us and then aren't satisfied also suffer because they feel like being sold a pack of lies as well. And then often they're isolated and they're isolated from the people that they could have drawn sucker from and they could have been really seen by and known because it's in these deep relationships that we flourish. And so Christianity at its best, and I won't say purist because who can, who gets to say what's purist, but at its best, like was the, I think maybe historically the original subverter of that system. It said the first shall be last. You know, it said uh, the cry of Mary when she finds out that she's pregnant is like, you know, the powerful will come down from their thrones that 
uh, God loves, the reason God seems so angry most of the time in, in, in the Hebrew Bible is he's pissed off that people are treating the poor badly. And he says, you've kind of marred the dignity of my face in these people. And that alongside others, which, cause that like in that's present in loads of different traditions and in political movements. And if there, if there was a sense of, we could all tell that story better about human dignity, we would all say not playing this game anymore, screwing everyone over. <laughs> then that would be a, like a wave of liberation. The thing is with that though, Elizabeth, is that's quite <laughs> radical. <laughs> and uh, is it? What, yes. And what you've done there is you've, you've opposed the interests of the powerful. And uh, like when you oppose the interests of the powerful, particularly if it's underwritten by something as uh, potent as uh, bloody hell, connection to one nurse, uh, total rectitude, yeah. uh, it's absolute. In fact, we all need certainty. to overcome our egos and get on our knees. Yeah, I'm all right. I mean, I'm trying my best. It's just um, the, the, the knees are weak. Um, <laughs> But like in the end, it becomes less and less a kind of gentle and reflective Christianity and a kind of more a robust militant oppositional sort of Christ as vengeful opponent of inequality. You know, of course, you mentioned very early on the the principle of nonviolence and the degree of commitment that that demands of people, particularly as the terms and the space and the parameters are established by the dominant and the powerful. I mean, yeah. I suppose that's almost tautologist, but like, yeah. how do you, and do you envisage Christianity ever accessing that level of, um, I want to say, uh, like sort of radicalism? Well, I think it, it, it does and it has like historically many of the kind of most transformative political movements have been Christian. Um, what like civil rights in America? Civil rights, you know, if you look at Victorian England, the kind of transformation of labor laws around animal welfare, not, you know, not least the, um, the abolishment of the slave trade. The complexity there obviously is that lots of the people running the slave trade were doing it and drawing on scripture to do it. So you always need to tell the story of like, there's, different ways to read this book and i think that there's one way to read it another but so you, you're always in kind of crisis and battles of legitimacy and the, i guess that the answer to your question is i don't know russell i don't know i don't know how and i feel this like how do you tell a story within the terms of the game as it's currently being played like richard and lydia Iowade and i've talked about this like they did a, a live podcast for them and part of the reason that people came is because Richard's famous and we wanted to talk about what that means for status and sort of flag what status is doing to us but using the tools of fame you see and so lot, often in history the answer that Christians have had to this is that you withdraw you say the game is too corrupt society is too like deeply poisonous the only way we can actually live by these ideals properly is to withdraw and um, kind of you know build a monastery or whatever and there's a kind of there's a contemporary version of that which is the Benedict option in the states which is a kind of real like we give up we're pulling away from society that's the Benedict option yep um, what you just pull out you go focus on the vegetables and the deep meditation yeah I mean culturally it's slightly different from that I think <laughs> um, uh, but yeah that you like you don't engage and that you know the Anabaptists and the Quakers at various points like and the Amish guys. and the Bruderhof now there's like wave after wave after wave of church, like Christian movements who've said we withdraw and we try and live with dignity and honour each individual and etc etc I'm just not convinced that that's the right thing I think power needs challenging and but I don't know how you do it well I don't know and I'm you know I'm a massive hypocrite I'm like not a useful person in this because I'm deeply flawed and and so all of those all of those things about what does it mean to try and live a different set of values live a different kingdom offer a different story about human beings that brings hope when you've got such imperfect messengers I live in the tension of that all the time. I wonder perhaps if there is not, uh, if that in effect there's no tension there that we, did you just eat a grape so surreptitiously? That was startling to witness. It was like a shoplifter. Yep. I mean, if I, people might hear me chewing, but you know, it's fine. 
I've never seen a grape dispatched so stealthily. It's like an assassin. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that there's no tension really. In fact, oughtn't we embrace this imperfection and the fact that we are flawed in a sense to fortify the idea that, that no individual will ever again be the focus of idolatry or a, as uh, presented as a heroic solution. Yeah. Instead, we recognise that we have shared ideals and values. God knows how they're achieved. Or to, I suppose you would use the Bible, uh, like, but like we we to override. Uh, the fetishization of I- I- individuals. Preach so. it, brother. I think you're exactly right. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. It was usually kind of to click the bell. It might not be there, because over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you. <laughs>